Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. To all of my returning subscribers, hey, how you doing? You so cute. And to all of my newbies, welcome. Kick your feet up as I give a recap of the 90 Day Fiance Before the 90 Days, Season 4, Episode 11, entitled Private Eyes. That's all coming up next. <gasps> it's Bunny. <laughs> We pick up where the last episode left off. You know, where Lisa is flipping Usman the bird because she doesn't agree with what he's saying. But it's just a cultural difference. And she doesn't understand that it's really evident that he has his beliefs about men in the household, about marriage. But she took it as an insult instead of walking and talking it out. Lisa is very controlling, but she knows that after a while, he'll run after her. She needs to understand that there's a cultural difference, but she's so desperate to get married, she's not looking at the red flags, and Usman is so desperate to go to America, he's dealing with her BS. Of course, they kiss and make up, and Usman says again, you're controlling, you need to calm that down, you're always angry at me for something, but they just continue to ignore each other's big issues, and they move on. So we get to Ed and Rose, and they are having fun. They are trying to let loose. They're swimming, they're cuddling, they're sharing some laughs. But Ed still hasn't told her that he plans on having a vasectomy. And he claims he didn't tell her before everything got so serious because he didn't want to lose her. Very, very selfish move. And he finally tells her that he doesn't want to have kids. And she wants to know why he didn't tell her that before. And she is on the verge of tears. And Rose says, look, I want to have two more kids. It's one of my dreams. It's something that I want to do. And she said, well, maybe you'll change your mind over time. And Ed says that I don't have to think about it. Look, I have enough money, time, and energy for you, me, and Prince. That's it. And he's very blunt about the way that he feels. And he's being very honest. Unfortunately, the honesty is a little bit too late. And Rose is pissed and confused. We get to Erica and Stephanie, and they are getting ready to drive to see Erica's parents. And Erica wants to tell her parents that she's bisexual, and she is getting more and more nervous the closer that they get to her parents' residence. And Stephanie has a gift for the mom in order to share a warm welcome, something to kind of calm the mood before they arrive. We get to Yolanda and her family and we're picking up where the last episode left off and they are doing a reverse Google search on William's photo and they find out that it is a stock photo that has existed online. Yolanda still isn't convinced and she says, let's try another photo. I really don't think that it's a stock photo. They try another photo and again, it is a internet stock photo photo and Yolanda has a very hard time accepting the evidence and she says you know what I still think it's Williams he's not using that photo but I still think that it's him this is not the person that I fell in love with this is not the person that I've been talking to and of course her kids are just so frustrated and upset that she's being naive about the situation and she's not looking at the facts she is in complete denial and she doesn't want to look at reality so Godfrey and Varya, they seem to be opening up a little bit more and Godfrey is happier and it seems that his friend had a little bit of impact on her because she doesn't seem as distant and she wants to take him to a banya, which is kind of like a spa, but it's something that gives you more of a relief and she wants to show him to have a really good time and what you do is you strip down all of your clothes, you're completely naked, you go into this sauna-esque room and you get beat down pretty much with these bushes but the leaves and everything that's included on the bushel is intended to give you good health and then afterwards you run into a nice cool lake. Godfrey is sad that he's developing this fun and finally having this open up time but he leaves in a few more days and he's pretty saddened about that but he feels that he's falling more and more in love with her but she is still having an issue with his past and she's very uncomfortable. 
So Ash and Avery, picking up from the last episode after he walked off, he then decides not to get in the vehicle and leave Avery alone. And you could tell that he's trying to calm himself down. He finally comes down to talk with her yet again. And Ash says, I felt very attacked by you. And do I not make you happy? And she says, yes, you make me happy. But you react in such a way when I want to ask you the hard questions. Every time it gets to a situation when I want to ask you something that's really, really serious, because we're talking about having this serious relationship, when you don't want to answer it, you become very defensive and you walk off. It's something that you do over and over again. She's so upset that he she doesn't even want him to touch her. She just needs a moment, which she deserves. David gets picked up by the airport by his friend Jim and he catches him up on everything that's happened and Jim says you know I feel sorry that he actually had to go through all of that but now maybe he's getting the facts that this isn't a real person and that he should accept what's going on that this person is not real it's a real person but the intention behind it was fake you've been scammed can you just move on and just realize that you can find somebody else and how can you become close to somebody that you don't even know David is still he's just not convinced and he tells Jim that he wants to hire a private investigator. And Jim says, okay, how are you going to investigate someone that clearly doesn't want to be involved with you? Clearly someone that has the impulse or has the desire to just get money from you. How can you do that? But of course, David wants to be David and he goes forward in hiring a private investigator. Darcy sits down and she creates a package to go back to London because she feels that she needs to mail back the key that Tom gave to her, which was for her to use for his apartment. And she says, I don't even want that in my house. I don't want the energy. I don't want that reminder of him. This doesn't belong in the United States. And it was symbolism to her and physical symbolism for her to move on and get over Tom. Tom then says he's moved on and the way that Darcy behaved for him it was the confirmation that he needed to move on and that he wants to be with somebody else because this person treats him the way that he wants to be treated I honestly believe that Tom is saying this because he doesn't want to look like a complete jerk and that he has somebody on the side as a default and he never meant to be serious with anyone he's always wanted to be the player which he's always said but of course he's handled it in such a jerk way but now he's facetiming that someone special in his life we then go to lisa and usman and they don't have enough time to have the traditional muslim wedding so they're gonna head back to nigeria to have a courthouse ceremony they go to the marriage registry and of course lisa complains again about the building how it looks old and it doesn't look like this in america she's always complaining about something but the employee makes it known that there are specific documents that they need before they can get married for one they need a marriage notice in their law this goes outside of the office so if anybody else could say well no this is my husband too then that is an indication that they can't get married also the employee is informed that lisa is divorced and since she's divorced they need the divorce certificate they can't marry without these documentations and of course lisa gets upset and blames everything on usman again you were supposed to get this you had six months i told you to research what documentation that we have and i don't have it here and she was so upset she gets up without saying goodbye to the employee shaking his hand she kind of acts like he doesn't even exist which is really really rude and Usman is really sick of it and he's just like everything is my fault everything always goes back to me and it being in my lap clearly she could have researched the information herself but she puts it all on Usman and she always blames him for every little thing and he makes note of that and he says that I'm so sick of this behavior she's always saying something is my fault she 
She always complains. And this is not marriage material. But instead of just waiting and having this marriage later, Lisa is in a rush to just hurry up and get married. We then cut back to Steph and Erica. They get to her parents' house and her parents are happy to see Erica. And they even invite Stephanie with a few hugs and laughs. And Erica is super nervous. It's, you can see it all on her face. She doesn't look comfortable while sitting down. And she finally says that she's bisexual to her parents and there's a bit of a silence. And her father responds by saying, so want any more fried rice? And they all get a laugh. So her parents say that they don't mind and they don't care about that. That's not something that they're concerned about. They're concerned about her being safe, healthy, and happy. And they always want her to have a smile on her face. And the dad makes a silly, goofy face saying, hey, don't look like that smile. Everything's okay. And Erica is shaking that she's so happy that her parents are up, aren't upset with her. And her mother says, you know, a mother always knows and I always knew. And then the dad asked Stephanie, has she came out? yet to her family and Stephanie says no because she's just not ready yet and they give them a hug and wish them well um, and that they hope everything works out the only thing that they're tearful about is that they've discussed that it's possible that Erica may move with Stephanie back to New York and they start to share some tears that the only thing is that the thought of her being so far away not her being bisexual not her decisions but there's a possibility that she may move but they give them hugs and wish them well so her, her telling her parents about being bisexual went over well and her parents aren't upset David meets with his friend Victoria to speak with the private investigator because a private investigator does not speak English, only Russian. So Victoria will sit down, they will listen to everything that the private investigator has found, and Victoria will translate everything to David. So they're telling her that everything that they found, according to the data, is a lie. Everything is made up. There are several different accounts using the same photo. These accounts are made to talk to different men. And she tries to explain that a lot of women in that area use that as income and it's only a job. And these are the facts. But immediately, David is very defensive and he says, that's a lie. You don't know her like I do. This is all being made up. This is not true. He is in complete denial. Victoria wants to tell him, look, why are you upset with me? I am only the translator. You hired this investigator. Why would you hire an investigator and then get upset with the results? You wanted to see the truth. Can't you see this? And David is still in denial and he doesn't believe he's getting scammed. He wants to meet the actual person that he has been typing to for seven years. And Victoria says, I don't know what it's going to take. I've translated the facts and this person doing the research, he's being scammed. If he doesn't want to see that, that's him. Ed, when he wakes up, he sees that Rose is gone. After that discussion and him saying that he doesn't want any more children, it's very evident that she's upset. Ed says that she didn't leave a message at the front desk. She's not answering her call, his call. She's not answering any of the text. And he realizes that she's gone. But later... She shows up and she sits with him at the table and she said she doesn't give him a hug or anything. She just sits straight down. So then she goes to tell him that after you told me you didn't want to have any children, why didn't you tell me this before you got here? Why didn't you tell me such a serious thing before we got so deep? And even if we did... We started to get serious. You didn't tell me then. Why didn't you tell me that? And she's so frustrated and angry that he didn't tell her. And he responds in saying that, I didn't want to tell you that because I didn't want to lose you. And also, I wanted to get to know you deeper. So I didn't tell you that. And she says, okay, look, you lied about your height. Then comes the STD stuff that you wanted. You tell me every other day there's something wrong with me, my legs, my breath. Um, you you think my sister and I are the same? We are not the same. I don't, I don't think you see that I love you, and I don't want to be with you because of the money that you have, and I don't think you love me. And she says, you know what? I'm done. 
and she's completely done and she gives the look letting him know that I'm done and she says over and over again I tried to give you chance after chance after chance but you you embarrass me you belittle me you make me feel like nothing I'm done and I wanted to stand up and clap because finally she says you know what I did all I can do and I'm done and she has every right to be upset Tom speaks with his new boo, which is Shannon, and he reveals that he was talking to Shannon while talking to Darcy, and he didn't tell Darcy that. As he's speaking with Shannon, he says, you know, I talked with her and things didn't go over well, and Shannon wants to know, did you have any feelings for her? Did you see anything working out? And Tom says, no, it didn't go how I thought. I'm done with Darcy and, Darcy, and I'm ready to move on with you. And Shannon says, well, I'm glad that you have clarification and that you moved on. So it's evident that Tom has at least told Shannon about Darcy and letting her know that I'm really not sure how this relationship will go. He just didn't handle it too well. But he's so excited to just keep things going with Shannon. He offers to come to Canada to spend time with her. And Shannon is excited about that and welcomes the invitation. Ash and Avery, Ash is flipping out. He's upset. He's telling Avery, you know, you're, you're a mean person and you hurt people and now you've hurt me. And he's throwing this adult slash toddler temper tantrum. And Avery is saying, I don't think... Um, Avery is saying, you know, I don't think you intend to say the things that you do. And maybe you don't understand the depth of what you're saying. And I'm trying to understand why you think I would want to hurt anybody or be a mean person. But all I do is just ask, ask you questions. And when it's questions that you don't want to answer, you behave like this. And Avery says to the producers offset, she says, I really think that he's upset because I've exposed the areas that he's hidden from other people. And now he's deflecting and flipping it on me. And Avery says, you know what? I'm done. And Ash acts like a toddler. He has a fit. He's starting to throw clothes around. He's pulling things up out of luggage and he's throwing them in there. He packs everything up. He's saying, look, she doesn't care. She doesn't care. She doesn't even care. And he packs his things up and leaves. And it's almost comical because he is really throwing a hissy fit about it all. And Avery can't help but just to sit on the couch like, why is he acting like this? All I wanted to know is the who's and the where's and the why's of everything. And she can't believe it. Godfrey and Vira, the, the, the last scene, they plan a nice romantic day. And Godfrey is really feeling like he's having a connection. He really believes that this is his soulmate. But he's just a little sad that he's flying back home soon. And Godfrey feels that this trip has brought them closer together, even though they've had their ups and downs. And that is the end of the episode. And we see the excerpt of him saying that he feels that they're very, very close and that he thinks that they should take their relationship to the next level. He gets down on one knee and asks her to marry him. But we can see from Vaya's response that maybe she's not ready for marriage just yet. Let me know what you think. My feelings still stand from the last uh, recaps uh, that I gave in the last one, how I felt about each couple. If you want to view that, please look at the previous ep episode as I talk about my thoughts because all of the things with each couple has been verified with this episode. The way that Ash is behaving. I said that Ed was unfair in not expressing his feelings about the future. I discussed how Darcy is responsible for the cause and effect of everything. She knew that Tom didn't want anything that serious, yet she took that chance and dove in with a Playboy, and now she's eating it up, but she just doesn't like the taste. We also talk about Lisa and Usman, how they're both desperate. They're both in desperate situations, so they're ignoring each other's BS. I also talked about Yolanda, and it still remains the same, that she is in denial, the same thing with David. They have yet to see 
any of the people that they're so in love with and they're in denial. And I think the only thing that would give them closure is to literally see the individuals that are scamming them. What else would they need in order to move on? I don't know. Let me know what you think. I cannot wait until next Sunday to see how this concludes. There is so much going on and I just hope that they all find peace soon, that they're not in denial and they accept the truth. Subscribe, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. You don't want to miss anything. And also follow me on Instagram at the same profile name, official bun underscore E. And check out the playlist at other awesome movie and television show recaps and reviews. Until next time, until the next video, stay safe. And I love you guys. Bye.